Hey guys, it is I, Trollface the Man. Uh, first off, I'd like to apologize for the echoiness. I can't do much about that. I'm recording in uh, my dining room, which doesn't have very much furnishings, but it has a table for me to actually do these videos on. Uh, so today's video is going to be about making a high-powered UV flashlight like this out of a normal flashlight like this that you can buy right at the store. Uh, I did just do a video about my flashlight and some glass I've been collecting, special types of glass that include uranium glass and manganese glass, and how that I actually use said UV flashlight to find these special types of glass. Um, I will demonstrate, these are two new pieces I found since that video, and if you want to watch that video, I'll put a link in the description below. Um, I'm going to go over all the different components we're going to need, and I would also like to demonstrate the properties of said flashlight just in case you hadn't seen the other video. So to do that, I'm first going to have to turn off my studio lights here because, by the way, that is a huge bulb, because it's actually, there's more light going on here in here than daylight, but even in situations like that, that's kind of what I designed this flashlight for you can still spot the uranium and manganese glass. But it looks a lot cooler with less light, so I'm gonna turn off the lights real quick. All right, the lights are off, and this is what I mean. This is the normal flashlight. If I shine it onto these things, they basically do what you would about expect. Now this is uranium glass, and in case you don't know what uranium glass is, it's actual glass made using uranium. Um, and this is manganese, manganese glass that's made using um, oh, manganese. This is my UV flashlight now, and if I take this UV flashlight and I shine it here, you can see the uranium glass glows, and so does the manganese. You can see it actually has unique patterns on it that you can't see normally until you shine said UV light on there, which is why the properties of these are so cool. And the uranium glass glows a very fluorescent green color. So, um, let's get on to actually building this, shall we? All right, so let's go over what we'll need exactly. Now, the first thing you're going to need is a flashlight you're gonna be able to do this with. Now, this can actually be kind of tricky because you need a very specific type of flashlight that has a very specific type of bulb in there. Now, um, the if you look at these ones in specific, they sort of have a white plastic piece and a square light in there, uh, which sort of gave me an indication of what type of bulb they have. And the reason why is you have to make sure that, at least for this specific method to work, that they use something called a star LED. And the reason why they get the name star LEDs is because they are shaped like stars. These are UV LEDs that I bought online. Um, they might, it's possible the specific light could use something like these bead LEDs, in which case I can't assure you that the method's going to be the same. I just have those to uh, demonstrate. So. I'm not endorsing any specific brands, but the ones that I found to be best so far are these Defiant brand lights. You can see I have two of them over here. Uh, this is the LED one, or purple, the UV one, and this is just the standard, the way that they come. 600 lumens, it's pretty bright. Uh, these flashlights are significantly smaller than those ones because these are the ones I was able to find. I was supposed to get both of these for 15 bucks, but they were missed priced and um, didn't have time to sort of talk to a manager about it and uh, get things sorted out. But So I just ended up paying 20 bucks for the two flashlights, which isn't too bad. Um, the idea with this is that there should be a little bit easier to carry around than this big flashlight here, but they should have the same features to them. Uh, these are 3D cells, these are 3C cells, supposed to last for 10 hours and this one's supposed to last for three. So anyways, uh, first we're gonna need flashlights that, are, that have these star, uh, these star lights in them, which, uh, you know, it might be hard to tell, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know, the Defiant brand all seems to have it. You're also going to need uh, rubbing alcohol and paper towel. This is to clean off the thermal grease that will be on the back of the star LEDs. You're going, not necessarily need a pair of scissors, but I'm going to need that to get it out of the case. You're going to need thermal paste of some kind. It can be for LEDs, it can be for computers, it can be really for anything so long as it's thermal paste. You don't have to put thermal paste on uh, necessarily, but the thermal paste will help with the LEDs heat transference 
and if you don't have it on there, you're going to significantly shorten the life of your LED. You're going to need electrical solder of some type. Um, I have this stuff that's with built-in rosin, so that way uh, it basically it has a flux built into it, and a soldering iron of some kind, once again, or a wood burner or soldering gun or something similar to that. If you have all these pieces, then you can move right on to the next step, which is the disassembly of the flashlight. First thing I'm going to do is cut this flashlight out of the packaging. If they made the products half as good as the packaging, a lot of times I would think that nothing would ever break. It's like trying to break in a Fort Knox. All right, so if everything's good, I remove this cap, which is just a simple unscrew. It should have a star uh, LED in there. Oops. Of course, things are really so simple. So this one has uh, a thing you can see that it's twisted in there. So I'm actually gonna have to stick something in there like this and then unscrew it. So you can see that it has a metal piece here and a metal piece here. And after I broke that loose, I now can unscrew this actual light. And we are not so lucky, are we? As it turns out, even this had me fooled. So no, we weren't so lucky. And uh, this is just, it is a, technically a star LED, but it's a special chip. So. I can't use this, unfortunately. Uh, I made a mistake and I messed up. I'll have to reassemble that later and I'm sure this light's going to probably be the same thing. It really, it had me fooled. It really did, but uh, you make mistakes sometimes and it just doesn't work out. So, uh, if that's the case, I'm just going to put those off to the side. And I'm going to actually do this with my working, still working 600 lumen LED. So I'm gonna do this for demonstrational purposes. I'll actually reassemble it into a normal LED flashlight afterwards. But they like said, what you, you do, you do. Sometimes things work out, sometimes they don't. So I'm gonna unscrew this right here. Now, if you wanna find this specific model, it's Defiant 600 lumens, um, and it is the 3D cell model. Uh, the specific, I got this for 15 bucks. I found it in a discount bin. This one's a lot simpler. And if you look on the inside of it, you can see, put focus, there's a single star cell with a red and blue wire, which of course is red is positive, blue is negative. It's just soldered in and it has a little paste on there. It's not actually epoxied, uh, which is sort of surprising. I'm gonna take my soldering iron here I'm gonna plug it in. Once again, not endorsing any specific brands, but this uh, Weller soldering iron, I think I picked up for 20 bucks. Came with a couple of different attachments and it works pretty good. I think it goes up to uh, 800 degrees Fahrenheit, which for people that actually have super amazing good soldering irons, I know that might not be much, but uh, maybe it's 950, I'm not sure, actually. I'm not big enough into electronics to uh, to dictate. Now, while that's heating up, let's talk about these for a second, right? These are UV three volt or three watt stars. They use between three and 3.8 volts. Um, now you might think, okay, well there's three 1.5 D cell batteries in there, which actually equals 4.5. So I can't use these, right? Uh, technically speaking, you shouldn't be able to. However, when I tested this, it seems like even after the forward voltage, or after the voltage drop between this LED, there's only like three volts coming through. So more than likely, this is actually only a 3.5 volt uh, LED in there as it currently is. So, um, yeah, I, I use these without any problem with the other flashlight. I've used the other flashlight quite a lot recently and haven't had any difficulties. So, um, but the, the specific thing about these, right, is I got 10 of them uh, online from an eBay supplier 
for 10 bucks, so a dollar per LED. Now, the thing is with these is that um, I don't normally like doing it, but this is in fact from China. I, I don't like trying, I don't like buying from China unless I have to. Um, but the reason why I do buy these is from China is because I found out that if you buy from suppliers over here, let's say for example Amazon or something like that, uh, what will happen is they will buy these LEDs from China and then they'll ship them to you and then they'll charge you three times as much, sometimes more. So there's no real point in trying to buy them from over here because the other sellers are just getting them from China anyways and reselling them to you. Uh, unfortunate truth, but that's how it is. So the way these LEDs work is that there's actually a positive and negative side to them, right? So you can see the little plus there and you can see a little minus there. So basically, there's plus on this side, plus on this side, minus on this side, minus on this side. Basically, any three of these points, one, two, three, are all negative. Any three of these points, one, two, three, are all positive. So you can solder your wires to any three of these points, uh, your negative wire to any three of these points, or your positive wire to any three of those points. All right, my soldering iron seems to be hot now. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see better. And I'm really just going to touch my soldering iron to that. It should only take a few seconds. Probably should have let it heat up a little bit more actually first. It's melting it. Oh, there we go. So the wire just popped right off. It's under a little bit of uh, tension there. The same thing goes for my other side. So I'm just gonna touch the soldering iron to there and the wire pops right off. Melted the wire a little bit there. Now you gotta make sure you do not, and I mean do not press this, these wires back down through that hole because this is literally a piece of metal and it's like fused together. You can't really, you can actually take this whole thing out right here. You can't really get into the inside of here. That's the problem. So if you push that, those wires into that aluminum, you might never be able to get them back out. Just, uh, this is a forewarning. And you might be able to never screw this back in. Not really, but that seems to be the case that I just did. So yeah, they apparently have some type of circuitry, I imagine built in there that limits the uh, voltage down from 3.5 volts. I'm now going to just pull this off. Just that it's not epoxied or nothing, so it should just be able to be pried right off with a fingernail or if this just happens, you can just get, like me right here, I'm just gonna take my scissors and pop that right out. This is why we needed the uh, alcohol here. Uh, you can see what they have on the back of here is thermal paste. They didn't really put it very center here. Uh, but the idea is, is as this LED heats up, it's gonna generate heat. The thermal paste helps it conduct with this aluminum here and absorb, or aluminum, uh, and absorb the heat and dissipate it amongst this big brick instead of just in the light because heat's the enemy of LEDs. So, the reason why we need the alcohol and paper towel is to clean up this old thermal paste here. So I'm just gonna take a piece of paper towel. Soldering iron's still left in. Be careful not to brush your arms up against that accidentally. I've done that on more than one occasion and it's not pretty. So, a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Acetone works too. Um, so do mineral spirits. A lot of different things can work for this, but uh, water even, honestly, if you want to put a little elbow grease into it, but it'll take longer. We don't need it spotless. We don't need it to be polished or nothing. We just need that stuff to mainly be off, which it is. So at this point, we can take our own thermal grease. I got this from Best Buy locally for, I think, eight bucks. Oops. Pretty significant size tube for it. This is for CPU, CPU cooler. I'm just gonna take a little dot there. I'm just gonna Put it down. 
and that's enough that it should swish out pretty good. If you use electrically, uh, if you use thermally, therm if you use electrically, if you use electrically conductive uh, thermal paste such as Arctic Silver 5, you have to be careful because if it pushes out the side, it can cause a short circuit. Uh, this stuff isn't electrically conductive, so I shouldn't really have to worry about that. I now take my UV LED and I match up the side. So I know that this is the positive side by looking at the plus that's sort of hidden underneath there and this is the negative side here. So positive wire, negative wire, I'm going to of course want them on the appropriate sides. Now there's little holes in the star and that's actually, it sits right around the wire so I should put it like this and it should just go right into place. Perfect. So it's right into place, it's stuck on by the thermal paste. I can now take this wire and this wire and solder it to anywhere on the positive or on the negative side, which is can actually be a little bit tricky. So let's say for instance positive, I might want to solder right there and negative, I might want to solder right there just to sort of give it a little stretch. Once again, this is going to be a little bit of a tricky part. So I'm going to take a little of my electrical solder. I could probably just use it soft enough. I should just be able to use my Yep, scissors cut right through it. Going to take my soldering iron. Just is going to be a little bit of an ordeal. Actually to make things easier, uh, instead of doing it that way, I'm going to actually just apply some solder to it first. There we go, we got a little solder dot on there. I don't know why I didn't just uh, do this in the first place. But you know, sometimes you don't think straight. And there we go, now we got a little, I wanted to actually shorten out nothing. All right, let's do it this way. So I'm gonna put the uh, wire, I'm gonna fold it over here. Fold the red wire over here and then use my solder gun to push the red wire down into the solder. Until it hardens. And it's hard so I can push it back in there and get rid of this extra solder here. I'm not going to try and pretend that I'm very good at soldering. I really am not. These people out there are crazy when it comes to soldering. The same thing for the other side and press this blue wire down. It might get a little hot in your fingers just to forewarn you. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to press it down. I'm going to let it Harden. If all goes well, when I press this button, this LED should fire up. Yeah, check that out. So this is a apparently the low frequency mode. I must flash it around, I'm guessing 30 hertz a second, because you can see it's sort of, this is low intensity light, so it's not as bright. Apparently it's flashing at about half the rate of my camera's refresh, which I think is at 30 or 60 frames per second. So this probably flashes at about 30 frames per second, which is too quick for your eyes to see, but it, uh, the camera can see it. Uh, there's also a strobe mode on here and a high intensity mode. So low intensity, strobe, high intensity. And I'm just changing that by pressing this back button. So let's test it. I have my leaf here and you can very clearly see, you can use it like a torch like this if you wanted to, you can very clearly see the patterns, the UV reactive patterns. And the same thing goes with this right here, you can see how intensely it glows. So in reality all that's left to do with this light for example, is to take the front cover, the flashlight, and just screw it back into place. Now you want to be careful, like uh, if, if, if your solder sticks up too far, if you over tighten this, you can actually pull your wires loose. So if you see the light flickering, or if you feel any sort of re significant resistance or grinding, you might not want to tighten it that far. But now that it's been tightened on, I now have a projectable, low intensity, medium intensity, high intensity light that I can point at something that's UV reactive, such as this piece of uranium glass, or 
this manganese glass and it'll light it up. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, it's pretty simple. Um, you just get a light. If you get a light like this, I'm sorry that the other two lights didn't work out. Um, that's unfortunate. I thought they would have the chip light in there. They apparently didn't. So uh, if you get a light like this, once again, this is the Defiant 3D cell light. And it has, uh, it has three features on it. Uh, regular or low intensity, high, low intensity strobe and high intensity. And it is 600 lumen. So if you can find the specific model, it should still have the, the same design to it with the chip lights here. Chip lights cost 10 bucks, the flashlight costs 15, the solder and everything else like that. I actually got a little electrical solder with my uh, solder gun, but I bought this independently. So yeah, the, all you need for this is you need a soldering iron, a flashlight that uses a chip light, the chip lights, um, some solder or electrical solder, and some thermal paste, and some rubbing alcohol and paper towel to clean the stuff. It's pretty simple. It's helped me find a lot of UV reactive items so far, and I think for 20 bucks in reality, uh, I think for about 20 bucks to build this flashlight, this is way better, and I mean way better than a lot of those uh, high intensity flashlights they sell online that are like basically the same as the other flashlight that I made a video on how to make the, uh, the UV headlamp, in which case I'll put an annotation in the video and I'll put a link in the description below if you wanna check out that light, which is a lot simpler to make than this light. A lot cheaper too, it only costs a few bucks, but it's nowhere as powerful. So I thank you guys for watching this video and if you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit the like button. Please remember to comment whether or not this was helpful, uh, whether you did it yourself, what did you plan on doing it, and any questions you might have. I thank you guys so much for watching um, and you know, I hope you guys hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Thank you guys and bye, bye. So something funny. As ridiculous as it is, you remember how these flashlights right here came in two packs, right? Or in a two pack, right? So I decided to look at this flashlight, uh, the smaller one, uh, you know, just figuring it's gonna be like the bigger one, and no. So I decided to take this apart, which apparently you can just actually hold it right here and unscrew just this very cap right here. I look at it and it is a star LED chip. So I'm just going to quickly, and I'm not gonna record it, but I'm gonna quickly make a UV light out of this one and see how well it works. So we'll be back in a second. You know, irony is my favorite type of humor. And the reason why I find it so funny is because you don't expect irony, just like how I didn't expect this flashlight to uh, to actually be the one that would uh, have the, st the chip in it out of both of those. So after getting this desolder, it actually just pops off and it looks like that uh, because this is lower voltage, this is only three volts tops. Uh, there's first off no thermal paste or anything like that because it just literally sits right there. And second off, you can see the electronic uh, components on the inside there, which I'm sure is also in this bigger flashlight, but it's hidden uh, in areas where you can't see. And I also turn my regular flashlight back into the white light again. But yeah, so it's just uh, seems to be in areas where you uh, you can't see it's underneath that aluminum. Got the UV LED in. As you can see, it actually works off of the uh, current voltage, so I wonder how strong it's going to be. Um, I might actually have to uh, maybe take a drill and hollow that out a little bit because it's not going to fit over top of this white piece of plastic, which I need, so I'm just going to scrape that out a little bit. So I'm using a drill, I think I might have found a simpler method. There we go, fits over top now. 
This doesn't stay in place by itself very well, but can't do much about it. Hope for the best with this. Yeah, look at that. It's not extremely bright, but it's more concentrated than, uh, oops, wrong one. It's more concentrated than this one. So you can see it's, it's only maybe about a third of bright as bright, but once again, the difference is, is that this one is this big and this one is this big. So once again, just knocked over all my LEDs. So, now that that's out of the way, let me show you how these flashlights look with the lights off. First up, the small one. Alright, we've seen how that does, now let's move on to the beast. Well, I hope you guys liked the video, and if you do, I kindly ask you drop me a like, leave a comment, and subscribe if you already are not. I apologize for the delay on this one, I was working on a new song I was planning to use in this video, but instead I failed to complete it in time. Almost like a uh, writer's block of sorts. One last thing, if you guys would kindly consider donating this channel a few bucks to help make up for the video's expenses, I would be eternally grateful. This video cost me around $40 to make when you consider supplies I used in the video and other stuff I had bought uh, before for testing purposes. If you are interested in lending a helping hand, please consider donating to my Patreon or clicking the support my channel button, typically under the video. Thank you guys very much for watching and keep being awesome. See you guys then. Bye.